So welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for another edition of Team Superheroes. I'm with I'm Trent Hazy. I'm from Platform Engineering on Teams. And you guys know me, Jace Marino. I am the uh, Teams Customer Success Lead for Teams Platform. So today I want to talk to Trent a little bit about using apps in Teams. It's a question we get all the time from customers uh, from various roles, whether it's developers, IT professionals, the end users, the business. Uh, we want to address a couple things today. One of them though, I think is a baseline, maybe help me out Trent here, on what is available when it comes to apps in Microsoft Teams. So there's actually three flavors of apps in Teams. Uh, the first are Microsoft apps. So when you see something like SharePoint, Forms, Power BI, uh, those come from us. Uh, the second layer is third-party apps. So those are apps like Trello or ServiceNow, tools that you would use outside of Teams. And then the third layer is line of business apps or custom apps. Uh, those can be built using our APIs so that you can build something from scratch. It's awesome, love it, great, great summary. So if I'm a user though, it's great to know these apps are available. Why would I use them in Teams though? Because I've already got access to them outside of Teams. Things might be working for me okay the way they are today. What's the additional value of why I'd consider bringing them into that experience? So it's a great question. There's really two reasons. The first is, there's a collaboration that happens in Teams. So when I see a report from an app, if I want to collaborate and actually get my questions answered, if I want to you know, dive deeper and, and have a conversation with someone, having the report and the conversation together really makes me more efficient. Um, the second is it can be proactive. You know, Maybe I, there's something happening in this tool elsewhere um, and I'm, I'm not proactively looking at it, but it can tell me something just happened. That makes me infinitely more efficient. The, the information's coming to me. So I love that. I get maybe a quick summary is it's just to reiterate for everybody out there. It's it's insanely valuable to have the collaboration aspect where you're you're kind of bringing together all of your tools and reducing that tool sprawl and context switching between apps. But where you really start to become superhero is when I don't have to leave the part of the team's canvas that I'm in and I can interact with different services and applications and tools right from where I am, whether that's a conversation or a channel or whatever it is. I, I love it. Thank you, man. It's a great, great summary. So enabling apps and teams now. Now, sometimes we do this presentation, you and I have been caught in this before, and we're talking to customers, there's an end user who hears about an application and, and it sparks an interest, and then they go to their store and the app might not be available. Why is that? Walk us through what's yep. going on there. Yep. So there's something that happens uh, with the tenant admin that gives them control over the apps that are made available. It's called a permission policy. Uh, so some apps might be blocked for, from use in, in the tenant. Um, permission policies allow you to control which apps are available to which users. Um, so sometimes they might be blocked entirely or might be blocked from specific users. Mm -hmm. Got it, that's awesome. So why would they be blocked? Then is another question. Great question. Usually it's security and compliance. So um, the admin is concerned about where the data is stored or what uh, personal information is made available to that third party. Uh, so they really just wanted to lock it down for a specific reason. Yeah, perfect. And understandable, right? We, we get why you do that. If I'm an admin, I'd be asking now at this point, what is Microsoft doing to help me enable applications for my tenant? Especially the ones if you think about that people are already using every day. How do we make that easier? Yeah, we actually have a resource that outlines the security and compliance details of every third party application in our store. Um, and we'll share that link with you so you can see. Awesome. Now, last question I have for you on this. So let's imagine in a perfect world, I've got my Teams environment set up, I'm a tenant admin, and we've been open to allowing apps and Teams like many of our customers have. How do I get the end users to discover these applications and use them better and really understand what's possible? Yeah, one of my favorite ways of doing this is actually going into a different channel and see what they're using mm -hmm. there. Uh, because that usually is a bunch of my colleagues and they're probably gaining some productivity uh, just by using those apps. So I'm going to go steal some of their tricks and, and use them myself. Cool. Now, now let's say I'm maybe even a tenant admin and let's say we've taken a custom or homegrown solution we built internally and we're bringing that into Teams. Mm. We've had some great scenarios there for you um, and customer examples. What is my best way to get people to leverage that experience? There's actually a different policy called a setup policy, and it allows you to pin an app to the navigation bar, the left rail. Um, that will increase usage by sometimes five or 10 times. Uh, it's making it visible, really easy to find. You don't have to remember, oh, it's in that channel over there, and let me go find it. It's right there in navigation, and it, it makes it a lot easier. I mean, that, that's the last thing. I'd love to end on that piece right there. This is taking your existing investments, bringing them to life in Teams, pinning them so they're discoverable for the end user can increase the value of the solution essentially inside of Teams. That's awesome. Trent, you're a legend. This definitely won't be the last time we hear from this man here soon, but thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. Let us know if you have any questions.